There is a crisis at the border. Yes, I am here in Yuma, and I can tell you uh, that there is a crisis at the border, no matter what the Biden administration is trying to say to you. They are not telling you, the American people, the truth. They're just not telling you the truth. That's why I came out here. Last week I was out here. I've been covering uh, the border. Now this is my second week for Sean Hannity, um, Fox News. And I can tell you that the crisis that I am seeing here, that I am seeing here, the one that we're going to talk about today on the Sarah Carter Show, on this podcast, is real. It affects not only our national security, the lives of our of our people, our children especially, but also the humanitarian crisis and the lives of those people being played in a game of political ping pong, and I've told you this before, that are coming into the United States. And let's let's just not even talk about what the drug cartels are doing now. They're so emboldened, and the human traffickers, and the sexual predators. I, I can go on and on and on. And today, I have a very, very special guest. You will not want to miss this. I have House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy on here. He is going to be coming out to the border. He sent a letter, a letter to the Biden administration looking for answers, calling this a crisis. We are going to talk about all this and more today on The Sarah Carter Show. You know, I want you to make sure that you subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcast. Please do that. And you can find us on YouTube. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Rumble, Rumble and Parlor. You will not be censored there. Get all those links at sarahacarter.com. Go to sarahacarter.com. And while you're there, sign up for our email list. Please sign up for this email list. Um, it is so important in a time where they're censoring everything from Dumbo to, uh, you know, Dan Bongino to the president of the United States. I mean, I feel like what what world am I living in? What kind of upside down world? The least we can do is get those emails out to you so that you will be informed. And I promise you this, I will always tell you what I see and what is going on. I will never just say things without actually being there. That's why I've traveled to Guatemala. That's why I traveled to Afghanistan. That's why I've traveled to Pakistan. That's why I've traveled around the world to bring the American people, to bring you and me, my family, the stories. I believe in this country. I want us to know the truth. I want us to be well informed. And I trust you and believe in you just like, I mean, like our government should but doesn't. Okay. So go to the, you know, go to sarahcarter.com, sign up for my email list. I promise you, you'll get emails in the week, giving you the latest updates, letting you know what's going on, even if they censor me. Okay. And, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you, thank you, thank you to AMAC, AMAC, the Association for Mature American Citizens that sponsors this podcast. They are amazing and awesome. They, they have a great platform, a great organization. They are an alternative an alternative to just about every benefit that AARP offers. They are an alternative to that, but without the liberal agenda, right? They don't have any of that liberal agenda. You want to be with an organization that supports your values. You go to AMAC, go to amac.us slash Carter. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S slash Carter and join today. You will not regret it. Wow. I don't even know where to start. I, um, I was devastated last week, you know, in Texas when I was in the Rio Grande Valley. By the way, thank you, Chris Cabrera, uh, the vice president of the National uh, Border Patrol Council, uh, you know, the union that represents all their great agents out there on the front line. Thank you for telling me the truth. Uh, thank you as well to my friend Albert, who is out there, and to others like Junior and everyone else. I, I use Junior and Zaldúas's uh, property. He is a private landowner. Uh, he and his family have had property in the Rio Grande Valley sector for, I don't even know, hundreds of years, I'm going to just say. I think they've been out there forever. And, uh, you know, that's where I can get out there and tell you the truth, right, without having um, the Border Patrol throw me off their land. So I just want to give a big shout out to Junior, um, who, by the way, Junior, you had a barbecue. You had a barbecue the day after I left out there. And I'm I'm a little bit disappointed. So next time I get out there, we're bringing out the barbecue. We are going to barbecue. I, I heard some people came Junior's way when they smelled the great carne asada cooking on his barbecue. So Junior, um, you know, had uh, he was out there cooking carne asada as people were crossing the border. It was just so great. Um, he's an amazing guy and and someone that I, I truly uh, thank for for all of his help. So, and I'll be talking to you soon, Junior. I'm really mad about that carne asada. Next time, okay? Next time. Um, and so let's talk about what's happening here. We are in a full-blown crisis. We are. 
We are. Um, House uh, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is, you know, sending letters to the White House. He's going to be here. He's going to give you the latest update on what happened. Did Biden ever answer him? You got to listen. You got to listen to the interview. It's incredible. Did the White House ever respond? Did Department of Homeland um, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, who, by the way, who, by the way, I'm, I'm half Cuban. I found out he was Cuban. I'm like, what, from the communist government? Because this guy, I can't even believe it. I can't even believe it. The fact that he doesn't even want to call this a crisis, the fact that he doesn't even understand what's going on out there is just, it's unbelievable to me. Unbelievable that this man has the gall. I, I would love to question him myself. I've seen it with my own eyes. Why doesn't he come on the Sarah Carter podcast? Alejandro Mayorkas, I would love to have you on the podcast. My mom, you know, was from Cuba. I'm sure you and I have a lot to talk about. A lot of similarities. I feel terrible for these migrants. These children that are coming into the United States say they're coming because of Biden's policies. That's what the human traffickers and the drug cartels are telling them. They are using this administration's failed policy to bring these kids into our country. I have never seen anything like this. I want you to hear this clip. This is Alejandro Mayorkas literally saying there's no border crisis. Listen to this. Mr. Secretary, um, do you believe that right now there's a crisis at the border? I think that the, uh, um, the answer is no. Uh, I think there is a challenge at the border that we are managing, and we have our resources dedicated to, to managing it. And so a lot of the things that you are, are talking about, you admit, take some time to implement. But right now you've got about 200 migrant children crossing the border every single day. Uh, CBP projected a peak of 13,000 unaccompanied children in the month of May, according to a report in Axios. Um, what is being done between now and then when you are able to implement all the things that you're talking about that you say will take time? Let me let me answer that question with tremendous pride. Um, the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security are working around the clock seven days a week to ensure that we do not have a crisis at the border, that we manage the challenge as acute as the challenge is, uh, and they are not doing it alone. This is um, um, a challenge uh, that the border communities the non-governmental organizations, uh, the people who care for individuals seeking humanitarian relief, all understand it is an imperative. Everyone understands what occurred before us, what we need to do now, and we are getting it done. Respectfully, sir, though, one of your predecessors, Jay Johnson, he said that a thousand illegal border crossings a day constitutes a crisis, that it overwhelms the system. We're at between three and four thousand now, according to CDP officials. So how is this not a crisis? Um, I have explained that quite clearly. I, um, uh, we are challenged at the border. The men and women of the Department of Homeland Security uh, are meeting that challenge. It is a stressful challenge, and we are. that is why, quite frankly, we are working as hard as we are, not only in addressing the urgency of the challenge, uh, but also in building the capacity to manage it. I mean, really? The challenge? This is not a challenge. It, it, what, a, a challenge is like my husband when he was blinded and having to, you know, learn to live life as somebody who is blind because there's no other option. A challenge is something you select. You're going to have a challenge. I'm going to challenge myself to be better at that obstacle course. This is a crisis. This is a crisis. There are people's lives are at stake here, folks. Not only ours. I mean, how many how many children lose their lives every single day in this country due to overdoses? And what about fentanyl? They people think they're getting a you know a Percocet or an oxycotton on the street, and a lot of times these are co college students. You know, someone says, "Hey, you want to you know Percocet or whatever," and it's a Mexican blue, right? That means it has fentanyl in it, and maybe a kid tries it one time and they're dead. They are literally poisoned. Our communities are being poisoned by the drug cartels. The drug cartels are killing our children in the inner city. They're using our children to sell drugs in underprivileged communities. But that's just that. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, look at what's going on. We don't even know who half the people are that are coming into this country. We only know the people that we catch. What about all the people who got away? That's what we talk about. That's what I talked about on the show with Sean Hannity.
What about the gotaways? I mean, I want to thank Art Del Cuero. He's also the vice president out here in the southwest of the National Border Patrol Council. He is somebody that took me out on the border, showed me the reality of what is going on here. The reality, not the fiction, not the fiction that the White House is perpetuating, not the lies that they are telling you. And what about all the people with COVID? They want you to lock down. We've been locked down for a year, forcing us to wear masks, triple masks, double masks. We don't even know what we're doing anymore. We're we're so confused. Our children are depressed. We're depressed. People are just trying to figure out how to get back to normal. We can't even ask the right questions about COVID. We don't even know where President Biden is. He's like in a basement somewhere in a bunker in the White House. Hasn't even done a press conference yet. Everybody's hiding. Everybody's lying. This was the same administration that perpetuated this administration is the people from Obama. This is the Obama administration. I'm going to call this the Susan Rice administration. I totally agree with Rick Grinnell on this. I think she is running a lot of this operation along with Obama, former President Obama and others. All they care about is that Iran deal, right? Like we got to get that legacy back. And, and, and they don't real and they know Biden's a mess. They know he's a mess. And they lied to you. They lied to you over and over again. There's never been anything like it. A hundred years from now, a hundred years from now, when we're all long gone, documents are gonna come out and things are gonna come out and they're gonna say, wow. The American people were really fooled. Look at what they did. Look at what they did to President Trump. I can tell you that his policies were working at the border. I've talked to so many Border Patrol agents, DHS officials, people that were here. They they were saying it was working. Just, Just plain facts. Whether you like him or not, his policies were working. They worked because he followed the law, implemented a law, gave boundaries. Those boundaries are understandable. People need boundaries world needs boundaries. We can't just do whatever we want, live in anarchy. Look at what's happening at the border. Look at that. Look at the mess we are in now. We are in. Not just them. This is not just about the people at the border. We are in a mess now that we have to try to find a way to fix. That's why I have Kevin McCarthy here on the show. And I want to tell you this, like there is nothing worse than listening to Mallorcas rattle off those lies and the News agencies that are there barely challenging him. Remember how they used to react with President Trump and, and, and everyone there? Remember that? With Kaylee McEnany and everything, even when she'd put up like facts on a chart. Poor Kaylee. She's like up there. I'm like showing you the facts. And they're like, oh, you're being such a racist. You don't understand. Ask any of these people if they're going to let, you know, um, migrants sleep in their homes. Are they going to, is Nancy Pelosi going to open up her house? I mean, she's got a big, huge house in San Francisco. Why doesn't she sponsor three or four family units and let, let them just eat out of her fridge, not even check their identification. Who cares? Just trust it. Trust it, Nancy. You want us to trust it. You want you and Joe Biden and Jen Psaki and everybody you care so much about the people coming into this country. If you care so much, create a program to sponsor them. You as a family, you are wealthy enough. You can sponsor them. Why do these cities, impoverished cities like Brownsville, Texas, and Yuma, Arizona, and all they're supposed to pay for this? No, 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 no. You're right. You care. Alejandro Mayorkas, I'm sure you have a great big house and a bigger heart. Take in some families. Take them in. Take them in. Let's see. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your money where your mouth is. Let's see how much you care about all these families. That's what I'd like to know. I want to play this sound clip about migrants needing to wait before they cross the border. Listen to this. I have to take this opportunity at the same time uh, to reiterate a message uh, that we have communicated uh, repeatedly throughout, which is a message to those individuals who are thinking of coming uh, to our border. They need they need to wait. It takes time to rebuild the system from scratch. Uh, If they come, if families come, if single adults come to the border, we are obligated to, uh, in the service of public health, including the the health of the very people who are thinking of coming, um, uh, to impose the travel restrictions under the CDC's Title 42 authorities and return them uh, to Mexico. And we have done that. We need individuals to wait And I will say that they will wait with a goal in mind. I mean, really? Really? 
I want you to think about what they are saying to you. Your children have been stuck in home pretty much for anybody who's going to the public school system, right? All year, more than a year, all year, right? You haven't been able to go to church or to synagogue or to the mosque for the most part. You haven't been able to do things normally. You know, I mean, I, I couldn't barely take my daughter ice skating this winter because the ice skating rink had a limitation of like, what, 22 people. You had to book it like in advance. And then if I, you know, booked it in advance and I didn't make it in time, I lost my money. Um, So she didn't even hardly get to go ice skating. She did not you know, just normal everyday life things. Right. And then all that time at the be- last year, at the beginning of the year, like those six months that we were all like trapped in our houses and everyone was freaking out and buying toilet paper. Remember that? And paper towels and all this craziness. And we were running out. Nobody had toilet paper at home. I don't even understand that. I still don't understand that. Like why toilet paper was such the big deal in COVID. But it was a big deal when you didn't have any. Um, Just throwing that out there. But the thing is, is that after all of this mess, all of the psychological crap that we have all been through, they are providing medical aid, medical assistance, psychological assistance, everything for people that are coming for across the border, people that we don't even know if what their claims are, are, are actual real claims. And I'm not talking about the children. I'm talking about when somebody says they're from Romania or they're from Pakistan or whatever. I, I don't even, they're making all kinds of claims, right? We're going to provide them with all of these services. Hundreds of millions of dollars in services, by the way, guys, when you think about it, right? But not the American people. This is an America last administration, an America last administration. I'm telling you, I warned, warned, warned over and over again about the Biden administration. I don't even know why they call it the Biden administration. Call it the Rice administration. Call it the Jen Psaki administration. I have no idea because we really haven't seen him. And where the heck is a Vice President Kamala Harris? She's like probably helping him in the bunker. I have no idea. Just like stand up straight. Remember this. Remember that line. I don't know. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what is going on, but it's very frustrating. Um, Before I bring Kevin McCarthy on, um, I want to talk a little bit about the letter that he sent to President Biden about the border crisis. Uh, This is from his letter. You confirmed this week, he said to uh, President Biden, that you received a briefing on a situation at the border, which, according to press reports, included information indicating upwards of 117,000 unaccompanied alien children will be crossing into the border this year. I want you to think about this. At the height of the Obama, and this isn't from the letter, this is me segueing just to give you a little bit of information. At the height of the Obama administration's um, unaccompanied minor crisis from 2000. 13 October until August 2014, there were over 66,000 unaccompanied minors that they accounted for that year. Right now, they are estimating 117,000 unaccompanied minors. I heard the number is far more than that. It'll be over 120,000 unaccompanied alien children, alien minors that will be coming into the United States. By the way, folks, that does not include all the children that lost their lives trying to come into the United States. This this coming year, it won't account for those that are going to lose their lives, that are going to fall off those trains like La Bestia, that are going to get taken by predators, that are going to be abused by adults, that are going to come over the border um, damaged and sick and in need of medical attention. These are children. These are children. And if the Biden administration really cared about them, They would not perpetuate this horrific crisis. This is a crisis created by them. I want you to listen to the rest of this letter. Um, This represents a marked increase from what were the highest yearly totals of apprehension by the U.S. Border Patrol in recent history. Oh, he brings it up here. 68,541 and 76,020 in 2014 and 2019, respectively, according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection data. While the administration has yet to release the border crossing data for February of this year, which we know now from some Border Patrol officials is estimated about 100,000, right? That's crazy, just for the month of February. January's data shows that nearly 113% increase of unaccompanied minors apprehensions when compared to January of 2020. That's a 113% increase from last January 2020. Total apprehensions in January show a 
7% increase compared to January 2020. Such drastic increases in apprehensions will no doubt already have put a strain on the capacity of the U.S. Border Patrol and the Health and Human Services officials tasked with caring for unaccompanied minors and alien children. In the face of all this, this is what Kevin McCarthy says, I feel compelled to express great concern with the manner in which your administration is approaching this crisis, but with the hope that we can work together to solve it. We are going to find out right now. Did President Biden ever respond to Congressman uh, Kevin McCarthy, the House Minority Leader? Did he ever respond? We are going to talk to House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy because he is going to the border. He's going to give us an exclusive right now. He's going to tell us what he hopes will happen and what message he wants to deliver to the Biden administration. First of all, thank you so much, uh, Congressman McCarthy, for being on the show today. I, I got to tell you, your letter is incredible. The letter that you sent, the fact that you're focused on the border uh, is, I think, of utmost importance to the American people. I've been out here for the last two weeks for Sean Hannity and Fox News. I've been reporting here live. And what I've seen is absolutely devastating from the humanitarian crisis to the national security implications on this 2000 mile long border areas where the Biden administration stopped building the wall that have been used and people are flooding in not only people, but narcotics and, and, and all kinds of contraband and smugglers to the fact that now we're seeing such an increase in young children crossing that borders. I saw some as young as four years old coming in with other young minors. Um, and, and actually we can't even tell their age. I'm going to talk to you about all of this and more, but first I want to get your take on what's going on and what is the latest coming from house members as far as like, what can we do to mitigate this crisis and get the attention of the Biden administration? Well, you know, the worst part about this, it's created by Biden. This is Biden's border crisis. I mean, had he not reversed the actions of the last administration, we wouldn't be here today. I mean, just take the, the sheer number of 100,000 uh, migrants that we were able to encounter in the last month. Think of all the number that we weren't able to encounter. But put that in perspective. Joe Biden's hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania, has a population of smaller than 100,000. That's just what he did in the first month. And then the number of children and the, what they're keeping them in. And the worst part about this, remember, we're in a pandemic still, COVID down there, not testing, not keeping the distance from them. And they're overwhelmed. What did the Mexico's president say about Joe Biden? He's the migrants president. He's encouraging this to happen. So the sad part about all this, is the only thing that's making this happen is the new president and the actions he's taken. He can reverse course and secure our border. Even as Secretary of State yesterday, Blinken said in, in the committee that borders and security matter a great deal, are fundamental to our security. But his actions are unbelievable. And remember, this created on the very first day. On the very first day, he didn't say open up the schools, but he said, I'm going to get 11 million citizenship. Well, that is just an invitation. And then he takes those. But 11 million, 11 million congressmen, sorry to interrupt you. 11 million is just an estimated number. We believe that number to be 20 million in the United States now. They've been throwing around that 11 million number since I've been covering the border for 20 years now. Uh, and I, I'm down here. I'm like, well, if it's 11 million, where, where are the, all these other people fitting into the picture? Right. And, and you mentioned something very important and it's about the gotaways. And yesterday in Arizona, while I was covering the border, one of the estimates that came in and, and I, I want to thank, uh, some of the Border Patrol uh, fellows that, that were able to get me this number, but uh, uh, officials, I don't want to give away any names, but they believe that an estimated nearly 40,000 gotaways this year alone, just in Arizona, 40,000 people that they weren't able to apprehend. And they actually say those numbers are low because yeah. in some cases they're only calling them groups of 20 when actually 60, 80 or 100 have actually fled and they and they weren't able to estimate the total number of people. What do you have to say about that as far as the national security implications of the possibility of people being in those groups that that could easily be people from nations that mean us harm or terrorist well, organizations? I first have to thank you for your work. Your reporting has been spot on and has been very needed at this time for the American public. But when you talk to the border agents, they will tell you it's not just Latin America of the individuals they are capturing come across. They will talk about Chinese, Iranians and others that they have captured along the way coming across. And you're right. That number is an estimate. And they've used that number for years. They think it hasn't grown. 
Well, we know it's growing month over month right now. And then there's this encouragement to come across, um, which, which just breaks down society when that happens. It's only going to get worse. And remember what we're dealing with right now. We're trying to get out of COVID, why people are coming across the border, right. not being tested. He's opened the border up, but doesn't open the schools. Um, and also what happens with the number of people he brings over with asylum, they're going to have the right to work. So now they're competing with the 10 million Americans who are trying to find work. Americans that whose lives have been uh, shuttered literally by the COVID pandemic. Uh, and now, especially for lower income Americans struggling to find jobs. And I also contend that the people that are coming across or are living in the shadows that cannot be good for for innocent families or men and women that are coming in here hoping for a better life and then they get here and realize well I don't know where to live if I take a job with someone they could abuse me because I'm illegal I don't have any real rights they they can threaten to deport me and all of a sudden it's indentured servitude in the United States yeah and what what also is happening I, I just heard a story from a Texas Farm Bureau about just on the other side of uh, his state where the rancher there had to leave their house because a six-year-old girl went missing. And the Border Patrol finally tracked down the group that took them. I just talked to, is it Yuval, um, the city, the mayor there, Don McLaughlin? He, they had to close school because of shootings and uh, the migrants coming across with guns. They, they've, they've had police officers shot at. They have car chases, he says, almost every single day. Th- this is not just a border crisis. It's now an American crisis. It's security and others. And if we think people are just coming across because they want a better life, people are coming across bringing drugs. The cartel right. has only gotten stronger. You, you talk to the, the ranchers in New Mexico where he stopped the border wall. It pinpoints the entrance now where people come. He's even talked about the live or the, the livestock that's come across that actually with disease hurt his cattle as well. And I think that you bring up you you bring up multiple Great points here because people don't think about the farmers. They don't think about the people living along the border, how this affects the American family, how this affects the American agriculture, our agriculture, our future. And, and also the people in Mexico. When, when Obrador says, look, Biden is the president of migration. Obrador understands what's happening here, right? He's, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. He has a, basically a shadow government along the border, and that is the drug cartels. They are controlling the the flow of fentanyl, opioids, heroin, methamphetamine. I mean, out here in Arizona is one of the biggest areas and biggest corridors for trafficking that. I wanted to ask you really quickly. This came from someone who wanted me to pose this question to you from okay. this is this is a DHS official and uh, somebody who I think brought up an excellent point. They said to me, I heard the White House press secretary, uh, Jen Psaki, say children and family units are fleeing persecution and violence in their countries. Can someone please ask her? Maybe you can. Maybe you can ask the Biden administration. Um, Can someone please ask her if the White House plans on sanctioning the governments of Brazil, India and Romania for persecuting their citizens, causing a very large percentage of our family groups coming from those countries who are seeking Uh, to come into the United States for asylum and then getting released into the U.S. I had no idea these countries were as tyrannical as North Korea. Busloads of Romanians and Indians, and they used some expletives there. And then she followed up with, we are offering them educational mental health and medical services. So follow up with a question, how can inner city Americans get the same type of access and services free of charge for what they've been through as well? That is a great question, because when you look at the big COVID bill they just passed, it less than 9% goes to COVID. They got a big chunk in there to play for the health care of illegals, not Americans. Right. And what about the kids in Chicago? What about the kids in Chicago? What about the kids in Baltimore, in the inner city that are suffering? What about the American people? I mean, has anyone in the Biden administration explained to you why they're allocating so much money and perpetuating this horrific crisis at the border has anyone even explained with common sense why this is no because he hasn't done a press conference in 50 days i've asked for a meeting as the republican leader about the crisis on the border he hasn't even acknowledged there's a crisis on the border when everybody else has they're overwhelmed with the number of children coming across you talk about the amount of drugs coming across drugs are just a valuable as children now and smuggling smuggling is making as much money as drugs is 
And it puts a number of people in harm way, the children, the women and others, uh, the human trafficking that is happening. This is a major crisis that the president is ignoring, but he created Right. And so you talk about the crisis and the women and children, and you talked about COVID, which is absolutely true. There were 108 uh, when I was in the the Rio Grande Valley sector, about 108 people in Brownsville the night I was there that tested positive for COVID. Right. And that's the ones that actually showed symptoms or had to go to the hospital for like a secondary infection or something. But we're not talking about all the other infections and diseases. A lot of these Children, a lot of these people have arrived here. They have multi-drug resistant tuberculosis or other ailments, which is really tragic and horrible. And sometimes they come across from, you know, in situations, especially some of the young children where they've either been brutalized or raped and the cities are picking up the tab there. So it's the either the federal government or the cities are picking up the tab because we've got to take them to hospitals. So this is a real strain on our economics, right? And our economics, even for our small communities. How does how does uh, the Biden administration, or what are you talking about as far as like with your leadership, how, how are we going to rectify that economically when we're in such dire straits right now in the United States? You, you raise all good points. I mean, the first thing should happen if you're president of the United States, you should reverse the course. But you should sit down with members of Congress to talk about the crisis. And he has not. And he has not. I sent him the letter asking for a meeting. No response whatsoever. How about Alejandro Mayorkas with the DHS? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that guy? Same thing. No meeting. Yeah. Why wouldn't he meet? Why wouldn't he go to the border and see it? Why wouldn't he meet with them or have him come to the White House? I just don't understand it. And why is he not listening to his own men and women on the front lines? And I want to say this because I'm out there and I see what these men and women do every day. And it is extraordinarily frustrating and heartbreaking for them. They are the first. I want I want every one of our listeners out there to understand these children that come across these family units that are coming across. The first people they're seeing is our Border Patrol agents. Sometimes these kids are sick. Sometimes they find these children and these family members uh, on the verge of death and they are the first line of defense. But while they're taking care of all of these folks that are pouring in and the drug cartels are using that behind it. Right. It have, what have you been hearing about that? Well, the drug cartels also run the smuggling, right? And so they move the people all in one area. So the Border Patrol all goes there. Then they come through the other area with the drugs. And the Border Patrol is stretched so thin because of their being overwhelmed by this crisis. And then with this new administration, they're hamstringing the Border Patrol for what they can do. Even the protection of being able to have in the weaponry When these cartels are not friendly people, they they, they are armed like a military. Um, And it it really puts fear into me for their for the lives of our Border Patrol. Right, because the the cartels have no budget. I mean, I've covered I've covered the drug cartels for almost my entire career back and forth to the border. And I've gone into Nuevo Laredo. I've gone into Sasebe, Mexico. I've gone into Juarez. I've spent time in these cities at the time of the height of the drug war. And that was maybe going back to 2007, 2008 as well, maybe even before that, 2006. And now what I'm hearing from agents is that the wars are escalating, that now since the Biden administration has opened these floodgates, Nuevo Generacion is fighting Sinaloa out here on the other side of the border for these transit routes into the U.S. And they're seeing an escalation in violence that they hadn't seen for a long time. And I, I get and, and I'm, I'm not talking about just bashing on the Biden administration. They actually said the policies that were put in place during the Trump administration mitigated a lot of this of this disaster, especially in the last year of President Trump's ter- uh, year in office, that they noticed a, a huge decrease because people knew they weren't going to get away with it. No. Nope. So that's got to be incredible when you see that. You know, the juxtaposition of what's happening with the Biden administration versus just, you know, with the Trump administration in four years. It's unbelievable of how quickly the border has become a crisis because of the new administration. I mean, the president of Mexico is right. This is what people feel, that on the very first day when Biden say you're going to get citizenship, people start moving up here. A hundred thousand is an unbelievable number just in that first month. What do we think it's going to be three months from now? Oh, by spring. 
the caravans are even larger. I mean, you know this. You're the expert down there seeing it. That's why I'm taking a number of members with the jurisdiction on the committees. We're going down there to see firsthand. I hope the president will meet with us when we come back because we have solutions for the problems and we want to make sure our border is secure. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and um, two more questions here. What can the American people do in an effort to help mitigate this disaster? I mean, what can what can we do? It, what it, what call well, to action can the American people take? I say don't stay quiet. Speak up right now. Follow what you're doing and you get educated on it. Call the White House. Call the speaker. Tell them you want action taken on this, that you don't want it to continue to be the way it is. And final question, because this is the one that everyone asks me, and then I'm going to leave your closing or I'll let you make a closing argument, you know, on behalf of on behalf of you <laughs> and 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 everyone who's going to the border. But um, why are they doing this? Why do you believe everyone asks me this? Why are they opening the floodgates? Like, for what purpose does this serve? I mean, it has to be for a reason. Is it a voter base? Is it uh, they want to uh, make a statement, some ideological statement? What is the reason that the Biden administration, with all the knowledge these folks have had, I'm not even talking about President Biden, talking about his team and his administration under Obama, uh, you know, seeing what happened under uh, Bush, seeing what happened under Trump. Why, with all of their knowledge, did they do this and create this crisis? I, I think they underestimated what was going to happen. I know what I've heard personally from a lot of Democrats who were in the um, Obama administration as well. And you ask them, what is, what is the biggest fear they have coming into this? They said a crisis along the border. And they just created it. Um, they did not think it would be this bad, a bad miscalculation. But what's even worse is when you make a mistake, the first thing you should do, admit it and correct it. They're denying it now, and it's only going to get worse. And it's going to harm the American people, and it's going to harm our neighbors to the south oh. and everybody else who's coming in this country. And we, we made such progress in the last administration. The border right. had become secure. The drugs had been less. The smuggling less. If you're asylum, you sat and waited until you had your court case before you came in. And he's changed all that in less than 50 days and created a crisis that is going to be very difficult to solve and going to have damage for a number of years into the future. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Congressman McCarthy. It's a really incredible interview with you. I think it's very eye-opening and telling for me. I, I got to tell you this. I wish you all the luck coming out here to the border. Uh, you are going to really get a feel for it when you get out here. I think you're going to see that the crisis is is far more than what we ever anticipated. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to be far worse than what we saw in 2014. Well, thank you for the work you're doing and the reporting you're doing for the American public. I appreciate you. Our friend Mike Lindell has a passion to help everyone get the best sleep of your life. Mike created the new Giza Dream bed sheets. They're amazing. I use them. I love them. You will receive two for one low price plus free shipping. Call 1-800-685-7221. Use the promo code CARTER. I got to tell you, I was stunned. I was stunned that after McCarthy sent that letter, to President Biden and his administration last Friday that he just didn't bother even responding. Like, they didn't even bother. They didn't even have, like, Kamala Harris write a letter and send it to, you know, the House Minority Leader. Like, this isn't a joke. This is not being political. This is about people's lives, American lives, migrant lives, the lives of our Border Patrol agents, our policies, wh who, how we reflect our, uh, this policy to the world. Look, this isn't just about Central America. This is about people all over the world getting a message that America is just letting her borders open and you could just come on in. And believe me, it's not just good people that are hearing that. One of the interesting facts that a lot of people don't understand is that even with the unaccompanied minors, uh, the, it, it's not always known like the ages of these young people that are coming across, right? So like many times they'll hear from young men and they'll say, yeah, I'm 16 years old. Well, they could be 18 or 19, but there's no identifiers on them. And so the Border Patrol has to count them as an unaccompanied minor. So now you probably have like, you know, 22 year olds, 19 year olds, 25 year olds in like a housing facility with, you know, little kids. Think about that. Think about what that does. And what about all of the gang members? You know, I mean, we're, 
you got to be serious. You can't. We have to look at both sides, the humanitarian crisis as well as the national security crisis. Got to treat everything equally. You got to think like a law enforcement official. Who is this kid? Okay, he says he's hungry, this and that. Why does he have an MS-13 tattoo? Or why does he appear to operate like a prison gang member? Because they can see that inside their little cells. They can see how these kids are operating. Like, you sit over there, you move over there, you do this, you do that. Like, when one kid's bossing everybody around, they go, oh, that kid's been in prison or something because of the way they're doing it. They can see things, you know, and they watch what's going on. But there's only so many of them. How are we supposed to protect all these kids? Health and human services, how are they supposed to take care of all these children? I want, Well, we're going to find out even more. I'm going to be out there today. I'm going to be in Yuma all day. I'm going to be with uh, Sheriff Wilmont. I'm going to be uh, also with uh, County Supervisor here, John Lyons, and we are going to be hitting the road. I, I'm going to be wrapping this up. I know probably when you hear this, I'll already be done um, with my uh, journey on the border here in Yuma, Arizona. But I want you to watch. Watch Sean Hannity. Watch Sean Hannity tonight. Remember that um, the House, uh, the House Minority Leader um, Kevin McCarthy is coming out to the border. He'll be out here. He talked about that. He'll be here also with uh, representatives uh, John Katko of New York and Tony Gonzalez of Texas. It's very important. I think what's so important here is uh, we got to ask uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, and he needs to send a letter after he comes out here and sees it for himself. He, he must hold a hearing. They have to hold some kind of hearings where Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas answers for this. And you know what? I say bring in domestic policy advisor Susan Rice. Isn't she the domestic policy advisor? Shouldn't we go to her and ask her some questions? I don't know. It's a tough, it's a tough road, guys. And uh, I'm out here. I want to bring those stories to you exclusively. I want you to understand that the crisis is not just here at the border. The crisis is in your home. It's in your towns. It's a crisis of drugs. It's a crisis of economics. It's a crisis of national security. The implications are vast and they're frightening. Um, and the Border Patrol's warning you guys. They're warning. They're saying, look, it's growing. More and more people are coming every single day. And uh, we've got to be cautious about all of this. It's a health crisis. It's an everything crisis. We can nip this in the bud right now. We can end this before it gets too bad. Or we can choose to ignore it. We can choose to ignore it and let the cards fall where they may. But we will only have ourselves to blame. Again, thank you so much for being a part of the Sarah Carter Show. I'm so happy to be here um, in Yuma, Arizona. Thank you, uh, everybody here in Arizona, for all your hospitality. More importantly, thank you so much. Uh, to our Border Patrol agents and to our men and women on the front lines here, our DEA, our FBI, our military, our National Guard, everybody who's fighting the good fight, and to all the wonderful residents, border residents and border towns that I've been to, thank you for your hospitality and amazing food. I blame you for the 10 pounds I gained over the last week. <laughs> But thank you so much. Again, thank you for being a part of the Sarah Carter Show. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And watch us on YouTube and Rumble. Go to Twitter. Go to Facebook. Go to SarahACarter.com where you can get all of these links. And don't forget to sign up for our email letter. Remember, here at the Sarah Carter Show, we are taking the story back. Today, I'm joined by Rebecca Weber, the CEO of the Association for Mature American Citizens. It's also known as AMAC. The most important question, I think, for so many people out there is, how much does AMAC membership cost? What does oh, it cost you for the asking. regular consumer? Yeah, so for $16 a year, okay, or, or less, you can join at a one, three, or five-year membership. You get a couple of things. You get the benefits. You get a great subscription to a magazine. So for $16, you're going to receive a bi-monthly magazine. But your voice is now going to be heard in Washington. We take our marching orders from you. If you stand for faith, family, freedom, if you believe in the Constitution, if you believe in the greatness of America, if you believe in individual freedoms and everything you just said, Sarah, 
$16 is not a lot of money to join the 2.3 million members that are really fighting hard to ensure that America remains the, the best country in the world. Rebecca, thanks so much for being with me today. I'm honored to have you and AMAC as a sponsor for the Sarah Carter Show. You know, for more information, folks, visit amac.us slash Carter.